In ancient Israel, King David, the beloved and legendary ruler, was nearing the end of his reign. Despite his many triumphs and victories, David knew that his time as king was coming to a close. As he reflected on his legacy and the future of his kingdom, he faced a crucial decision, choosing his successor. Among his many sons, one stood out, Solomon, his son with Bathsheba. David, guided by both his love for Solomon and his belief in God's will, made the momentous decision to anoint Solomon as his successor. With the support of key figures in the kingdom, including the prophet Nathan, Solomon was officially declared the new king of Israel. Solomon's anointing as king was not just the passing of a crown from father to son. It was the continuation of a legacy, a testament to the enduring strength and wisdom of the Israelite kingdom. As Solomon ascended to the throne, he carried with him the hopes and dreams of his people, ready to lead them into a new era of greatness. In the early days of his reign, King Solomon traveled to Gibeon, where the tabernacle of the Lord was located. There, he offered sacrifices to God, seeking his guidance and wisdom to rule the kingdom justly and wisely. As night fell, Solomon lay down to sleep, and God appeared to him in a dream, saying, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Filled with humility and a deep sense of responsibility, Solomon replied, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. So give your servant wisdom to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern these great people of yours? God, pleased with Solomon's request, said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Solomon awoke from his dream, and he knew that God had granted his request. He returned to Jerusalem where his reign as king began in earnest. Solomon's wisdom became renowned throughout the land, and people from all corners of the earth came to seek his counsel and hear his judgments. God's favor upon Solomon was not limited to wisdom alone. He also bestowed upon him riches and honor, making him one of the wealthiest and most respected rulers of his time. Solomon's reign was marked by prosperity and peace, and his wisdom was a guiding light for the people of Israel. One day, two women came before King Solomon, each claiming to be the mother of a newborn baby. The women lived together in the same house and had given birth to their babies within days of each other. However, during the night, one of the women's babies died and she switched her dead baby with the other woman's living child. Both women were adamant that the living child was theirs and they begged Solomon to resolve the dispute. After hearing their arguments, Solomon devised a clever plan to uncover the truth he called for a sword and declared, Bring me a sword, divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. The first woman exclaimed, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other woman said, Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Solomon immediately knew who the true mother was. He said, Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. The people marveled at Solomon's wisdom and discernment, realizing that God had given him exceptional understanding to administer justice. News of this judgment spread throughout the kingdom, and Solomon's reputation for wisdom grew even greater. After consolidating his reign and establishing peace throughout the land, King Solomon turned his attention to a grand and ambitious project, the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. This magnificent structure would become the centerpiece of Israelite worship and a symbol of God's presence among his people. Solomon spared no expense in planning and building the temple. He enlisted the help of Hiram, king of Tyre, a skilled craftsman renowned for his expertise in bronze work. Hiram sent his master craftsman, also named Hiram, 
to work alongside Solomon's artisans and builders. The construction of the temple was a massive undertaking, requiring the quarrying and shaping of large stones for the foundation and walls. Skilled craftsmen carved intricate designs and patterns into the stones, while others worked on the elaborate decorations and furnishings for the interior. Hiram of Tyre was particularly instrumental in the casting of the bronze pillars that adorned the entrance to the temple. These pillars, named Yahin and Boaz, were adorned with decorative capitals and stood as symbols of strength and stability. The interior of the temple was equally impressive, with the Holy of Holies containing the Ark of the Covenant, the symbolic throne of God on earth. The walls were overlaid with gold, and the floors were paved with intricately patterned teals. The construction of the temple took seven years to complete, and when it was finished, Solomon dedicated it to the Lord with a great ceremony. The temple became the focal point of Israelite worship, where the priests offered sacrifices and the people gathered to seek God's presence. In the land of Sheba, there ruled a queen known for her beauty, wealth, and wisdom. Her name was Makeda, but she is famously known as the Queen of Sheba. She had heard of the great wisdom of King Solomon of Israel, and she resolved to visit him to test his wisdom for herself. Accompanied by a magnificent retinue of servants and bearing gifts of spices, gold, and precious stones, the Queen of Sheba embarked on a long and arduous journey to Jerusalem. When she arrived, she was awestruck by the splendor of Solomon's kingdom and the magnificence of his court. She was welcomed with great honor and respect by Solomon, who graciously invited her to stay and partake in the bounty of his kingdom. The queen was impressed by the wisdom and knowledge that Solomon displayed in answering her questions and solving her riddles. As the days passed, the queen of Sheba observed the orderly governance of Solomon's kingdom, the justice of his judgments, and the harmony among his people. She saw the grandeur of the temple he had built and the wisdom of his advisors. She was deeply impressed by all she saw and heard. Finally, the queen could contain her admiration no longer. She exclaimed, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me. In wisdom and wealth you have far exceeded the report I heard. The queen of Sheba praised the God of Israel for blessing Solomon with such wisdom and prosperity. She acknowledged Solomon's greatness and the greatness of his kingdom, declaring that the wisdom and prosperity of Solomon's reign were a reflection of God's favor upon him and his people. Before she departed for Sheba, Solomon presented the queen with gifts of equal magnificence to those she had brought, a gesture of respect and goodwill between their two kingdoms. The queen of Sheba returned to her own land, her heart filled with admiration for Solomon and his God. As Solomon's reign continued, his wealth and power grew exponentially. His kingdom became known far and wide for its prosperity and splendor. Solomon accumulated vast amounts of gold and silver, and his trading ventures brought him riches beyond measure. Along with his wealth, Solomon also acquired a great number of horses, chariots, and other symbols of military might. He built up a formidable army, ensuring the security of his kingdom and expanding its borders. Despite his early devotion to God and his wisdom in governing the kingdom, Solomon began to stray from God's commands. He took many foreign wives, contrary to God's instructions for kings in Israel. These wives came from nations that worshiped false gods, and they turned Solomon's heart away from the one true God. As Solomon grew older, his foreign wives influenced him to worship their gods and participate in their pagan rituals. He built high places and altars for these gods, including Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. God was displeased with Solomon's actions and sent prophets to warn him of the consequences of his disobedience. But Solomon continued to stray ignoring the warnings and embracing the idolatrous practices of his wives. As a result of Solomon's disobedience, God raised adversaries against him. Hadad the Edomite and Rizon son of Eliada 
rebelled against Solomon, causing unrest and turmoil in the kingdom. God also raised up Jeroboam, a man from the tribe of Ephraim, to oppose Solomon and eventually become king over 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel. Despite these challenges, Solomon remained king over Judah and Benjamin until his death. However, his later years were marked by a decline in his once great wisdom and a turning away from God's commands. As Solomon neared the end of his life, he reflected on the vanity of his worldly pursuits. Despite all his wealth, power, and wisdom, he realized that these things were fleeting and ultimately meaningless. In the book of Ecclesiastes, attributed to Solomon, he writes, Vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Solomon realized that true fulfillment could not be found in material possessions or earthly pleasures. Instead, he came to understand that the key to a meaningful life lay in fearing God and keeping His commandments. In Ecclesiastes, he concludes, Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Despite his failings and shortcomings, Solomon's wisdom and legacy endured. His writings, including the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, continued to inspire and instruct generations of Israelites and later Christians and Jews alike. His legacy as a wise and prosperous king left a lasting impact on Israel's history and culture. Solomon's story serves as a reminder of the importance of seeking wisdom and living a life in accordance with God's will. It teaches us that true fulfillment comes from a relationship with God and a commitment to following His commandments. In the end, Solomon's journey serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the fleeting nature of worldly pursuits and the importance of seeking something greater. His words of wisdom continue to resonate today, reminding us to seek first the kingdom of God and to live our lives in accordance with His will. Just like King Solomon, I will conclude by saying, Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.